Allah. Allah is the Arabic word for God in Abrahamic religions. In the English language, the word generally refers to God in Islam. The word is thought to be derived by contraction from Alila, which means the God, and is related to El and Ella, the Hebrew and Aramaic words for God. The word Allah has been used by Arabic people of different religions since pre Islamic times. More specifically, it has been used as a term for God by Muslims, both Arab and non Arab, and Arab Christians. It is also often, albeit not exclusively, used in this way by Babists, Baha'is, Mandians, Indonesian, and Maltese Christians, and Mizrahi Jews. Similar usage by Christians and Sikhs in West Malaysia has recently led to political and legal controversies. The etymology of the word Allah has been discussed extensively by classical Arab philologists. Grammarians of the Basra school regarded it as either formed spontaneously, mertile, or as the definite form of law, from the verbal root li with the meaning of lofty or hidden. Others held that it was borrowed from Syriac or Hebrew, but most considered it to be derived from a contraction of the Arabic definite article al the and deity, god to meaning the deity, or the god. The majority of modern scholars subscribe to the latter theory and view the loanword hypothesize with skepticism. Cognates of the name Ali exist in other Semitic languages, including Hebrew and Aramaic. The corresponding Aramaic form is Ella, but its emphatic state is Elaha. It is written as, E-L-A-H-A, in Biblical Aramaic and, Elaha, in Syriac as used by the Assyrian Church, both meaning simply God. Biblical Hebrew mostly uses the plural, but functional singular, form Elohim but more rarely it also uses the singular form Alawa. Regional variants of the word Allah occur in both pagan and Christian pre-Islamic inscriptions. Different theories have been proposed regarding the role of Allah in pre-Islamic polytheistic cults. Some authors have suggested that polytheistic Arabs use the name as a reference to a creator god or a supreme deity of their pantheon. The term may have been vague in the Makan religion. According to one hypothesis, which goes back to Julius Fellhausen, Allah, the supreme deity of the tribal federation around Quraysh, was a designation that consecrated the superiority of Hubal, the supreme deity of Quraysh over the other gods. However, there is also evidence that Allah and Hubal were two distinct deities. According to that hypothesis, the Kaaba was first consecrated to a supreme deity named Allah and then hosted the pantheon of Quraysh after their conquest of Mecca, about a century before the time of Muhammad. Some inscriptions seem to indicate the use of Allah as a name of a polytheist deity centuries earlier, but we know nothing precise about this use. Some scholars have suggested that Allah may have represented a remote creator god who was gradually eclipsed by more particularized local deities. There is disagreement on whether Allah played a major role in the Makan religious cult. No iconic representation of Allah is known to have existed. Muhammad's father's name was meaning the slave of Allah. The Aramaic word for God in the language of Assyrian Christians is Elaha, or Allah. Arabic speakers of all Abrahamic faiths, including Christians and Jews, use the word Allah to mean God. The Christian Arabs of today have no other word for God than Allah. Even the Arabic descended Maltese language of Malta, whose population is almost entirely Roman Catholic, uses Allah for God. Arab Christians, for example, use the terms, for God the Father, for God the Son, and, for God the Holy Spirit. See God in Christianity for the Christian concept of God. Arab Christians have used two forms of invocations that were affixed to the beginning of their written works. They adopted the Muslim comma and also created their own trinitized as early as the 8th century. The Muslim reads, in the name of God, the compassionate, the merciful. The trinitized reads, in the name of Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God. The Syriac. Latin and Greek invocations do not have the words one God at the end. This addition was made to emphasize the monotheistic aspect of Trinitarian belief and also to make it more palatable to Muslims. According to Marshall Hodgson, it seems that in the pre-Islamic times, some Arab Christians made pilgrimage to the Kaaba, a pagan temple at that time, honoring Allah there as God the Creator. Some archaeological excavation quests have led to the discovery of ancient pre-Islamic inscriptions and tombs made by Arab Christians in the ruins of a church at Amal Jimal in northern Jordan, which contained references to Allah as the proper name of God, and some of the graves contain names such as Abd Allah which means the servant-slash-slave of Allah. The name Allah can be found countless times in the reports and the lists of names of Christian martyrs in South Arabia as reported by antique Syriac documents off the names of those martyrs from the era of the Himyarite and Aksumite kingdoms. 
Hadiths, a Christian leader named Abd Ali ibn Abu Bakr ibn Muhammad was martyred in Najran in 523, as he had worn a ring that said Allah is my Lord. In an inscription of Christian martyrion dated back to 512, references to Allah can be found in both Arabic and Aramaic, which called him Allah and Allah, and the inscription starts with a statement by the help of Allah. In pre-Islamic Gospels, the name used for God was Allah as evidenced by some discovered Arabic versions of the New Testament written by Arab Christians during the pre-Islamic era in northern and southern Arabia. Pre-Islamic Arab Christians have been reported to have raised the battle cry Allah ibad Allah, O slaves of Allah, to invoke each other into battle. Allah was also mentioned in pre-Islamic Christian poems by some Ghassanid and Tanakhid poets in Syria and northern Arabia. In Islam, Allah is the unique, omnipotent and only deity and creator of the universe and is equivalent to God in other Abrahamic religions. According to Islamic belief, Allah is the most common word to represent God, and humble submission to his will, divine ordinances and commandments is the pivot of the Muslim faith. He is the only God, creator of the universe, and the judge of humankind. He is unique, and inherently one, all-merciful and omnipotent. The Quran declares the reality of Allah his inaccessible mystery, his various names, and his actions on behalf of his creatures. In Islamic tradition, there are 99 names of God, lit. Meaning, the best names are the most beautiful names, each of which evoke a distinct characteristic of Allah. All these names refer to Allah, the supreme and all-comprehensive divine name. Among the 99 names of God, the most famous and most frequent of names are the merciful, Al-Rahman, and the compassionate. Most Muslims use the untranslated Arabic phrase, meaning if God wills, after references to future events. Muslim discourse of piety encourages beginning things with the invocation of, meaning in the name of God. There are certain phrases in praise of God that are favored by Muslims, including, holiness be to God, praise be to God, there is no deity but God and, God is greater, as a devotional exercise of remembering God, dhikr. In a Sufi practice known as dhikr Allah, Lit. Remembrance of God, the Sufi repeats and contemplates on the name Allah or other divine names while controlling his or her breath. According to Gerhard Bowering, in contrast with pre-Islamic Arabian polytheism, God in Islam does not have associates and companions, nor is there any kinship between God and jinn. Pre-Islamic pagan Arabs believed in a blind, powerful, inexorable and insensible fate over which man had no control. This was replaced with the Islamic notion of a powerful but provident and merciful God. According to Francis Edward Peters, the Quran insists, Muslims believe, and historians affirm that Muhammad and his followers worship the same God as Jews. The Quran Allah is the same creator God who covenanted with Abraham. Peters states that the Quran portrays Allah as both more powerful and more remote than Yahweh, and as a universal deity, unlike Yahweh who closely follows Israelites. In order to pronounce the word Allah correctly, one has to focus on the second L, in Allah. When the word Allah is preceded by the vowel A, or the vowel U, then the lamb is pronounced in a distinct heavy manner, with Tav Kim. This heavy lamb is thus articulated with the entire body of the tongue rather than its tip alone. For example, verse 5822, Manhata Allah, which means, those who oppose Allah. If, however, the preceding vowel is I, then the lamb in Allah is light such as in the Basmalah, Bismillahi. So if a Muslim says Bismillahi, he should not pronounce the lamb with a heavy emphasis, instead, just with the tip of the tongue. The history of the name Allah in English was probably influenced by the study of comparative religion in the 19th century. For example, Thomas Carlyle, 1840, sometimes used the term Allah but without any implication that Allah was anything different from God. Ah, however, in his biography of Muhammad, 1934, Tor Andre always used the term Allah, though he allows that this conception of God seems to imply that it is different from that of the Jewish and Christian theologies. Languages which may not commonly use the term Allah to denote God may still contain popular expressions which use the word dot. For example, because of the centuries-long Muslim presence in the Iberian Peninsula, the word Ojala in the Spanish language and Oshala in the Portuguese language exist today, borrowed from Arabic, Arabic. This phrase literally means if God wills, in the sense of I hope so. The German poet Malman used the form Allah as the title of a poem about the ultimate deity, though it is unclear how much Islamic thought he intended to convey. Some Muslims leave the name Allah untranslated in English. The word has also been applied to certain living human beings as personifications of the term and concept. 
Egypt. Christians in Malaysia and Indonesia use Allah to refer to God in the Malaysian and Indonesian languages, both of them standardized forms of the Malay language. Mainstream Bible translations in the language use Allah as the translation of Hebrew Elohim, translated in English Bibles as God. This goes back to early translation work by Francis Xavier in the 16th century. The first dictionary of Dutch Malay by Albert Cornelius Rule, Justus Hernius, and Caspar Wiltons in 1650, revised edition from 1623 edition and 1631 Latin edition, recorded Allah as the translation of the Dutch word. Rue also translated the Gospel of Matthew in 1612 into the Malay language, an early Bible translation into a non-European language. Made a year after the publication of the King James Version, which was printed in the Netherlands in 1629. Then he translated the Gospel of Mark, published in 1638. The government of Malaysia in 2007 outlawed usage of the term Allah in any other but Muslim contexts, but the Malayan High Court in 2009 revoked the law ruling it unconstitutional. While Allah had been used for the Christian God in Malay for more than four centuries, the contemporary controversy was triggered by usage of Allah by the Roman Catholic newspaper The Herald. The government appealed the court ruling, and the High Court suspended implementation of its verdict until the hearing of the appeal. In October 2013 the court ruled in favor of the government's ban. In early 2014 the Malaysian government confiscated more than 300 Bibles for using the word to refer to the Christian God in peninsular Malaysia. However, the use of Allah is not prohibited in the two Malaysian states of Sabah and Sarawak. The main reason it is not prohibited in these two states is that usage has been long established in local Al-Kitab, Bibles, have been widely distributed freely in East Malaysia without restrictions for years. Both states also do not have similar Islamic state laws as those in West Malaysia. In reaction to some media criticism, the Malaysian government has introduced a 10-point solution to avoid confusion and misleading information. The 10-point solution is in line with the spirit of the 18 and 20-point agreements of Sarawak and Sabah. In other languages that use Arabic script is spelled in the same way. This includes Urdu, Persian slash Dari, Uyghur among others. The word is always written without and to spell the vowel. This is because the spelling was settled before Arabic spelling started habitually using to spell. However, in vocalized spelling, a small diacritic is added on top of the to indicate the pronunciation. One exception may be in the pre-Islamic Zabat inscription, where it ends with an ambiguous sign that may be a lone standing H with a lengthened start, or may be a non-standard conjoined. Many Arabic type fonts feature special ligatures for Allah. Unicode has a code point reserved for comma equals U plus FDF2, in the Arabic presentation forms A block, which exists solely for compatibility with some older, legacy character sets that encoded presentation forms directly, this is discouraged for new text. Instead, the word should be represented by its individual Arabic letters, while modern font technologies will render the desired ligature. The calligraphic variant of the word used as the coat of arms of Iran is encoded in Unicode, in the miscellaneous symbols range, at code point U plus 262B. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.